are continuing the real cause of global warming. We are on chapter 3, and remember, let's see, chapter 3 was talking about the drought. What's the cause, and what's the cause of all the extreme weather? So how is everybody on this bright and beautiful triple degree day, huh? All right. Praise Yahweh. It's hot, but it's going to get even hotter, right? Okay, now, at least we can see here on, on page 71. On page 71, I'll just show this picture here. You see that? At least it doesn't look like that around here, right? I mean, that's part of scorched trees. I mean, like it says, it's ashes on the hills behind it and just charred trees, you know, standing there because of the drought and the weather. One thing I wanted to point out in this article here, California drought was causing it. They go on and they talk about how that there's a, there's a vast zone of high pressure uh, in the atmosphere off the west coast, nearly four miles high and 2,000 miles long. Four miles high, 2,000 miles long. And it's so stubborn that one researcher dubbed it the ridiculously resilient ridge. Okay, and that is a big, huge, massive amount of atmosphere that is sitting there. Now, it, and then it goes on, it says um, that in many ways, uh, in many ways, air works like water. The deeper you swim in the ocean, the stronger the water pressure because of the weight of the water above you is pressing down on the water below. Well, air in the atmosphere also has weight. Okay, air in the atmosphere also has weight, and the scripture tells you that as well. It tells you, that it actually describes in the scripture that air has weight, that Yahweh has made it this way. Now, I wanted to look down uh, where it says, um, it's underlined there, and it's talking about uh, Brown, the, the governor, and he's talking at a news conference there. This is the, uh, one, two, three, four fourth paragraph from the bottom of the right-hand column there. Uh, but he told reporters, he says, it's coming, just be patient. He's talking about rain. And he says, governors can't make it rain. Well, no, mankind governors can't. But Yahweh's governors will have that authority and power. Remember, a governor is one who has rule and authority over a district, over, over an area. Okay, And you remember Zechariah 14, 16 talks about the fact that this will be one of the, the ways in which we will have to use that authority in order to make people realize that if you don't keep the laws of Yahweh, then the blessings will be withheld from you, and the rain will be withheld, and you will have the, the power and authority to withhold the rain in order to get the people's attention. You know, we're still going to have to be dealing with stiff-necked and rebellious people. And we'll have to show them that this is the result now. If you want the blessings and, and, and have rain, to have things to eat and so forth, and keep the laws of Yahweh. Come and rejoice at Yahweh's feast, and you will receive all of these things. Okay, let's turn over to page 72 here. Uh, finishing up the end of this article, let's see if we can read at the very bottom of page 71 there. It says, if we do manage to get a few decent storms, we, we could definitely get enough water to stave off the worst consequences of a really extreme water shortage, he said. But if we don't, we essentially lost the whole water year. For anyone concocting plans to set up giant fans or other schemes to get rid of the ridiculously resilient ridge, meteorologists say that it's impossible. The energy, this is what I want you to see, the energy in weather systems is greater than the energy in nuclear bombs, they remind us, okay? So there's a lot of tremendous energy that is in Earth's ecosystem. You know, everything that takes place, uh, this energy is being, being used continuously because that's really what, what it takes to have life, you know, is to be able to, you have life uses energy. But at the least, for at least the next week, it says the, weather, the National Weather Service forecasts a few occasional sprinkles but no major storms and no breakdown in the ridge. Okay, no breakdown in that ridge, which was, remember, as it said, four mile, about four miles high and 2,000 miles long, okay? This thing was stubborn, and that's what it says here, that we, we've had a few weather systems come through, but 
it just keeps rebuilding there. It's kind of a mystery about how, about why, why is the global atmospheric pattern stuck like this, okay? And so it keeps rebuilding itself in the same spot. It just would not go away. Um, be interesting to see if it if it's, uh, has gone away some at this time and what size it is now. But what's the cause? See, it's a mystery. They don't understand. It's a mystery about why this global atmospheric pattern is stuck in this manner. So what's the cause? Well, he says, let me give you, let me give you the most definite cause and suggest a way to prove that I will show to you. Remember the proof that I gave you by the prophets at the beginning of this article about the prophecy of the increase in knowledge in this generation. Look back to page um, 61. Page 61 here. At the beginning of the chapter 3 here, drought, if you notice on the right-hand column, at the, the, towards the end of that, the last sentence of that first uh, of the top paragraph there, it says, um, but I will tell you what to look for, and then you will discover the true cause behind these long-term droughts, and maybe even the true cause of global warming. Both have the same cause. And in the bottom of the page there, it says uh, that, you know, page 62, that knowledge came true to, came due to a prophecy in your Bible. This shows the generation in which knowledge would be increased for mankind. So he started off in the very beginning talking about droughts and telling you about the fact that the reason right off the bat why droughts have come. And that is, of course, because of the prophecy dealing with the increase in knowledge. Along with the increase in knowledge comes the, the domination of man. You know, man becomes dumber and dumber as the knowledge increases. And he just can't think straight because his mind actually goes in the opposite direction. That's the problem with technology. Technology makes things more simple for people so they don't have to think. They don't have to act. They don't have to do things. You know, sit on, sit on, the, on the couch and you got your remote. You ever notice that every, all, the new, all air conditioners, they always have remote controls. You know, so you don't even have to get up and set the control on the, on the Just sit on the couch and just take your remote and set the, the air conditioning level, you know. Have your remote and set the, the, the TV level and so forth. Everything is set so that you don't have to do anything. You don't have to even remember how to do anything. Pitiful. Well, with that increase in knowledge in this generation, this generation also came the prophesied abounding of iniquity. The increase of sin, such as sodomy, homosexuality, incest, fornication, adultery, and even bestiality. You know, we read these things and we know these things are going on, but we really don't comprehend how widespread this is in the lifestyle of the world, you know. If we were out there in it all the time, you'd really see how disgusting all of these things are. All of these are now taught in homes and in schools to both the young and old. They're taught in textbooks. You know, children go to school and this stuff is actually spelled out in actually courses. And even uh, graphic pictures and stuff are shown to the children to teach them these things. And in some countries, you know, it's, it's required. A, a parent cannot refuse it. When he sends the children to, to school, they are required to take these courses. And if the parent objects, they can throw them in prison. That's the control that this Vatican has over everything. Well, all of these are now taught in homes and schools, both the young and old. From these sins come viruses that attack the micro-defense kingdoms of our bodies. This causes the breakdown in their ability of service in helping the body or family. And we know our oceans are sick. We know that death is increasing in all forms of life in the sea. Here's an article here. What's wiping out the starfish in California? Scientists on the West Coast are at a loss to explain what's killing sea stars, also known as starfish. In some places, 95% of the starfish population has died. 95%. In less than two months, they've vanished. Vanished. Finding six sea stars underwater, their limbs falling off, and their bodies disintegrating. But that's just a starfish, right? That doesn't affect us. Starfish don't have no feelings, right? 
It can't feel anything. It's just this stupid animal, a thing, if you want to call it an animal thing, that people find washed up on the beach, right? It's life. It's life and it's suffering. Sea stars can go from perfectly healthy to completely decomposed overnight. Overnight. A time-lapse video shows a sea star infected with white lesions. One by one, it loses each of its arms, and it happens in just seven hours. Seven hours. This wasting disease is typically caused by bacteria. It often happens during El Nino years when ocean temperatures warm and bacteria grows more quickly. But there is no El Nino now. The disease is more widespread than ever, stretching from Alaska to Southern California, the entire eastern coast there. Last year, a healthy star po star sea, sea star population near Vancouver, Canada, covered the seafloor. Now they are nowhere to be found. They've just vanished. In some places, 95% of the sea star population has died, causing changes to coastal ecosystems. And it's going to change. But mankind's not going to realize the change. But the ocean sure will. You know, the seas will realize the devastation that's going on. Because, you know, we just don't think about how one species affects another species, how it affects another species, and another, and so forth. This is an ecosystem. It's a system. A system works together with all the different parts, diverse parts put together, all operating to keep the whole thing alive. So when one thing suffers, everything suffers. We just don't see the immediate consequences, nor can we actually see what's going on because it deals with the microbial world. But it's affecting us. We've never seen it like this. Never, he says. Never. It's changing the ecosystem on the coast because the sea stars eat black-shelled mussels. It's kind of interesting about the sea star, too, because their bodies are made where they're... You know, they walk and stuff and they move and so forth. There's, there's nervous endings all over the place. But they have, their, their bodies under, underneath the, the skin like that they have is like bone plates. And it covers the whole, the whole arms of them. And then there's little muscles that hold all these things together. And it's so fascinating because the fact that they can, they can uh, eject a certain protein which will make their arms just stiff. And just stay that way for hours. You can just stay in a stiff position for hours. Something that our, our bodies, it's impossible for the human body to do that. You know, we have to be moving. And so if we don't, then we get stiff and so forth, you know. But they can actually just stay stiff for a particular reason. And, they're, and, and they got two stomachs. One of them actually comes out, you know, from the center of it. It actually comes out and grabs a hold to what it's going after. But notice here, starfish dying due to wasting disease. The deadly outbreak which causes limb loss and ultimately melts the starfish is stretching from Alaska to Southern California. Now, you see, the thing is, is when uh, the starfish also, you know, it has the ability, if it, if it loses an arm, like say a predator is coming after or something, sometimes it would just, it would just actually uh, dismember itself and just allow it to, to catch off, or to let loose so it can get away. But then it also has the ability to grow it back, you know. But this is being affected in this way into where they actually, it, it, this stuff actually like just melts the starfish away. In other words, it's, it's no different than if you had a, you went swimming in the water and caught a flesh-eating disease and it just began to eat your flesh alive. That's what's taking place to these things. And if it's just the starfish, what else is being affected? You know, because these things can mutate. And these microbes will mutate and then get on another fish and so forth and start eating them too. Huge numbers of starfish are dying. And remember, because that's what Revelation talks about. And the seas would be turned to blood, right? The life would die in it. Huge numbers of starfish are dying along the U.S. West Coast due to a disease that turns them into a white goo and disintegrates them. 
The disease is affecting a vast area stretching from Alaska, from Canada, down to Southern California. It's killed up to 95% of a particular species of sea star in some tide pools. Starfish or sea stars are marine invertebrates that come in a variety of colors and sizes. Many scientists believe that they're affected, they're dying from sea star wasting disease, a syndrome that spreads quickly and causes tissue to decay. That's, that, that's the answer to everything, isn't it? What was mad cow disease? Well, it's, it's a wasting disease. It's a cow wasting disease. Everything is a wasting disease. They'll never admit what's causing these things, but they'll always give it, it's a syndrome, right? You ladies get tired at nighttime when you're trying to lay down and it feels like you, know, you keep moving, you can't you get restless. Well, that's the restless leg syndrome. You need a pill for that, man, here. And they come, they devise some kind of pill to give to it, right? So it's the one that's not going out there pumping, you know, pharmaceuticals into the oceans out there to trying to, to cure these things. But everything is a wasting disease. They, 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 they will not go any further than that. They just, just want to give a name so they can think that, make people think that they're actually doing something. They have noticed white lesions on the starfish causing their limbs to fall off one by one in the span of a few hours. They essentially melt in front of you. I wouldn't want to be in that water. I wouldn't want to be in that water observing these things. You know? The scientists are puzzled as to the extent of the disease, which has struck in the past but has been more localized. They said the outbreak has never been as widespread as researchers are finding now. Even starfish at the aquarium in San Francisco died from wasting disease after water was pumped in from the ocean in September. So they thought that they were safe, but they had to get water, so they pulled water out of the ocean and ended up killing everything. None of us has ever seen anything like this before, said Stephen Morgan, an environmental science professor. Uh, he said the starfish deaths were a strange anomaly. Oh, wait a minute. Before that, he says he was unsure if wasting syndrome was to blame. But he said that the starfish deaths were a strange anomaly. Scientists are also concerned about the impact of the outbreak on the ecosystem. It's going to affect it, and it has affected it because of the fact that it, you know, other things live in this ecosystem, and so they're definitely going to be affected. Here's another article, viral disease, particularly from herpes, gaining interest as a possible cause of coral decline. Now, we read this earlier, but we'll read some of the highlights. It talks about here, as corals continue to decline in abundance around the world, researchers are turning their attention to a possible cause that's almost totally unexplored, viral disease. And they talk about herpes. As you go down to the third paragraph here, it says, uh, Coral abundance in the Caribbean Sea has gone down about 80% in the past 30 to 40 years, and about one-third of the corals around the world are threatened with extinction. Now, if, if those corals are completely extinct, that could wipe out all, all life in the oceans. You know? We've identified 22 kinds of emerging diseases that affect corals, 22 different types. Uh, look at the top of the page 73 here on the, the, very, the second paragraph. One of the surprises from recent research was the predominance of corals of herpes viruses, similar but not identical to the herpes virus that affect humans. Well, it's similar and not identical because of the fact that it's mutated just a little bit. Herpes virus appeared to constitute a majority of the viruses found in corals. Next paragraph, he says, we're shocked to find that so many coral viruses were in the herpes family. A mucus sometimes found on corals can harbor human-borne diseases. Human-borne diseases. And levels of these viruses have been correlated with terrestrial human population density. The more people go to the beach, the more they destroy it. Corals are often a major component of marine ecosystems and biodiversity, especially in the tropics. They host thousands of species of fish and other animals. 
thousands of species of fish. Now, if the coral's not there, that means thousands of species of fish are no longer going to be able to have a place to live. And they're passing diseases along to the fish. So, there's a lot of problems going on in the waters. Another article, dolphin killing virus reaches Florida and it's infecting whales too. The bottlenose dolphin die off that began in July has been traveling steadily south with migrating Atlantic herds. And now diseased and dead dolphins are turning up in Florida. The culprit, a measle-like virus. Measle-like virus has claimed 753 victims and counting making this the worst outbreak ever recorded. Recently, the bug has also been spotted in two species of whale. Two species of whale already have it. Now, what's going to occur with that when they begin to spread that among the whales, and then that begins to mutate and spreads to another species of fish? Three humpback whales and two pygmy whales stranded and decaying, tested positive for the dolphin uh, virus, man, they were stranded on the, on the beach and then they began to decay. Resident, the last paragraph says, resident Florida bottlenose herds could catch the virus, which spreads from close contact or shared air. Remember what we read earlier about the air, how, how aerosols get in the air and the air is spread and from the water, you remember all the bacteria and stuff begins to float up on the top of the water, on the top layers of the water, and when the wind blows, it picks this stuff up and blows it up into the air, and you breathe it in. Well, the same thing is happening in our soil. We know that AIDS virus latches on to and rapes beneficial microorganisms. Sin has been increasing for as long as television entered the home. There is now an overload of STDs in the air and the waters, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. Here's another article. Bacterial, viral, and fungal diseases transmittable through air. Human diseases caused by microorganisms can be classified as bacterial, viral, and fungi disease based on the type of the infectious microbe and classified as foodborne, waterborne, soilborne, or airborne disease based on the nature of the medium, which would be the food, water, soil, or air, through which these infectious agents enters the human system, causing pathogenic diseases, like drinking contaminated water, consuming spoiled food, and contact with soil increases the chances of getting infected. Inhaling air with infectious microbe is also a major cause for concern for some of the harmful microbial diseases. Makes you not want to eat, not want to breathe, and not even want to go outside, huh? You know, this is what's out there in the world. This is what we see out in the world. This is why it says that the earth is defiled because of the inhabitants. The air, the water, the food, everything is contaminated. Breathing pure air is a challenging task in the present scenario as air is being polluted by various factors. Apart from these physical and chemical pollutants, there is microbial flora present in the air. And all of this comes from the sins of man. Another one, 12 new viruses fished from world's oceans. Says a scoop of water out of the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, or any sea in between, scoop a cup of water out of it, and you're sure to get more than just salty water. The sample will be teeming with algae, bacteria, and millions of viruses. Most of the viruses are phages, and they infect bacteria and control how the bacteria grow and interact with their surroundings, making them a key player in the, in the ocean's nutrient cycles. But phages have been studied for far less than bacteria, and getting a handle on the ocean's viruses has been a slow-going process than characterizing the other life thriving in the waves. Now scientists report in a paper the discovery of 12 new, genera, new uh, genera of ocean-dwelling phages. 
The new phages were found in both ocean, uh, both deep and surface waters, both shoreline and open oceans. So they found 12 new genera, okay? 12 new species is what they found here, okay? That they had never seen before. And these phages, this is a, like it says, this is a virus that actually affects the bacteria. He says, I was dumbfounded that there were 12 new genera, says Matthew Sullivan of the University of Arizona, who led the new work. And now that we have this initial data, we can start to look at different ecological patterns in different places where the phages are abundant. There is no single gene that all viruses share. No single gene, okay? Which that's what makes it difficult to isolate all the viruses from a seawater sample. So instead, they just look for one particular one. But there's no gene in all of these viruses, these different viruses. They don't share a single gene. But he says they look for the cellophaga, which has been analyzed to see what phages it contained in the past and is known to be common in not only the ocean, but soils, glacial ice, and even the human body. So you can see it's getting in the water, it's getting in the soil, it's getting in the human body, the glacial ice, okay? So it's, it's traveling. It's traveling through the oceans and is going up and getting in the glaciers. Once the team had the bacteria, they cultured and grew it in the lab, and then they sequenced the, the genetic material it contained. Inside, they found 31 sequences that revealed that the phages fell into 12 different Notice 12 diverse groups, none of which have been identified before. When we normally talk about viral groups, they share at least half their genomes with each other, says Sullivan. But these viral genomes share less than 3% of the genomes with known viruses. So these are things that, you know, like, just like the apostle, I mean, just like uh, uh, Moshe said in Deuteronomy, you know, that the new gods would come up. Gods their fathers did not know. You know, these things have increased and they don't, they've never seen these before. It's something completely new. Well, the same, the prophets, the same prophets that show the increase in knowledge for this generation also show that sin is the cause of the defilement that we're suffering from in this present prophesied generation. And of course, this is what's going to bring the world to an end because it's going to get to where man cannot possibly survive here on earth because of the causes of his sin. In Isaiah 24, 1 through 6, remember he says, Before Yahweh's very eyes, the earth is made empty. Remember that word empty, it means to empty, to depopulate, to spread out, because it is spread out. You know, it's, it's, this depopulation is spreading out and the disease is going out. And it's made waste. That means to annihilate. It's just going out. These, these microbes are going out and annihilating life itself. Just like you see the starfishes just melting away. You know, we ought to keep all these things in our minds because we should reflect upon these things when we do sin and realize how we are affecting all creation. In the face of the earth, notice, it's perverted. You see that? It is perverted. We should underline that word perverted in our scriptures and get us to thinking about it. It's perverted. You know what perverted, what a perverted mind does? That's the cause of it. It's perversion. And its inhabitants, in other words, its dwellers are scattered abroad. That, that word scattered abroad, it means to dash in pieces and to disperse. You know, dash in pieces. Not just simply taking little pieces here and little pieces. No, dashing in pieces. That's violence. This is the very same things that Yeshua talked about when he said the violent men took the kingdom of Yahweh by force. And so it will be with the people and so will it be with the priests. So it shows who's responsible for teaching these things. Verse 3, it says, the land will be utterly empty. That's the same word, which means to depopulate. And utterly plundered, which means to take as catch or take as prey. You know, and that's exactly what's, what's taking place. These microbes which make up the earth and the water and so forth, they're being captured. They're prey. They're prey to these other, these other microbes that have become 
that have become STDs that attack them and rape them and destroy them. They are taken as prey. The earth is utterly plundered, for it has come to pass that this judgment has been pronounced. That word judgment, it's an interesting word because it means it's a cause, it means due effect, but it also means hurt, it means iniquity, it means harm, it means a lying message, a lying message. And it also means disease. So think about it. It has come to pass because of this lying message that this harm, this hurt, this iniquity, this disease has been pronounced upon the whole earth. And that's why it says in verse 4, the earth mourns because it's fading away. And the world mourns and fades away. And the heart of people of the earth languish. The earth also is defiled which means profane or corrupt. And you remember the scriptures tell you that it was the prophets of Jerusalem who profaned these things and spread these things under the inhabitants of it because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. And because of this, the curse has devoured the earth, and they who dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. Because of this, the earth there is devoured. Okay, the curse has devoured the earth, and few men left. The earth is going to be burned. Remember, Second Kepha three ten says that the elements will melt with fervent heat. Okay, because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take the nuclear wars, the tremendous heat of the nuclear wars, to burn everything to burn everything up and to be able to cleanse the land. Now, certain parts, of course, will be protected because people will be protected, the two billion. And then, of course, that's going to be our job and their job is cleaning up all this land that's left to bring the whole earth to purification and to cleanse the earth the way it was originally made for man. It's going to take a long time. You know? It's going to take a thousand years to clean all this stuff up. 52 years warning. Now you drink your own urine as prophesied. The Savior and the prophets of Yahweh prophesied famine for this generation. But not just famine, the worst famine ever since there was a nation. Coupled with this prophecy, Yeshua prophesied an extreme increase in hatred among the nations, as well as an increase in iniquity. Of course, iniquity means doing away with the laws of Yahweh, the laws of righteousness, which Yahweh, of course, gave to mankind to show each man the way that they can have peace, joy, love, and health. But he also foretold that with this increase of iniquity, love would grow cold in this present generation. So in the same time period, Yeshua shows a work over which he will preside as high priest. And of course, this work will cover the earth with the message of the kingdom of Yahweh and the last warning prophesied for this present prophesied generation. And those of you who have a book, don't have a book, there it is. The cause, sin, global warming. You see the, 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 the face there, how it just... All right. Freaked out, you know. Sin, global warming. Well, Yeshua shows us the cause of the above-mentioned prophecies, you know, how it's talked about these destructive plagues, and they're all caused by the activities of man. And yes, he shows you the cause of drinking your own urine in this generation, which is taking place in many cities, and many more will follow. But famine, drought, and global warming are caused by the same thing that causes sickness, disease epidemics, hatred, confusion, and war in this generation. They've caused the same activities of mankind, and those activities don't involve the burning of fuels. Those activities are vividly shown by Yahweh's prophets to be the result of sin. As it says, sin is the practice of breaking Yahweh's laws, as 1 Shachanon 3, 4, 7 through 8, and 10 show. Okay, sin is, is the transgression of the laws. Don't let any man sin you. If you practice righteousness, you're righteous. If you commit sin, you're of the devil. And the Son of Man will be manifested to destroy that work of the devil 
And in this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are made manifest. If you don't practice righteousness, you're not of Yahweh. And you, neither can you love your neighbor. And that's the whole reason why. They don't love their neighbor. And that's the reason why not loving Yahweh and not loving your neighbor, they have destroyed this, they are destroying this earth. Well, your Bible actually shows that the sins is what caused the global warming. Now, the religions try to take the real blame for global warming and the many other troubles facing mankind away from themselves by making false statements concerning the real cause. You know, they want to take the blame off of them and the focus off of them. The preachers don't want to tell you to stop these sins because if you do, you won't be making the money to bring in and put in the collection plates, right? So they try and put... They try and take the, this, this blame off of themselves. And they, and, they, and they want to say that it's from the burning. They say that global warming is caused from the burning of fossil fuels. Something that's impossible. Because there's no such thing as fossil fuels. Does a rock burn? Does a rock burn? That's what a fossil is. That's a rock. So what do you do? You go to the gas, go, go to fill up your tank with a bunch of rocks and, and, and go around driving? You know, it's so stupid. There's no such thing as fossil fuels, you know? The oil was put in the ground and was made in the ground by Yahweh, just like he made everything else in the earth. You know, any Bible, anybody, anybody who believes in the Bible should be able to comprehend that and, and accept that. There's no such thing as fossil fuels, you know? Things get covered with the earth, and they compress and so forth. But there's, but there's no way that you, you can form oil from taking the bodies of animals and so forth and, and compressing them under compression and so forth the way that they try to explain it. But this is all of their ways, you see, of, not, of rejecting the fact that if they can do away with this and put your mind on that, then they can make you think other than what the scripture says, you know, so you won't believe in the scriptures. You won't believe the fact of what, what the scriptures actually talk about the dinosaurs and what occurred and so forth. Instead, they want to say that these things were, of course, now you can go on the other route too now, you know, they also believe the creationists also believe the fact that the dinosaurs were there with, with Noah and so forth. They just missed the boat. See, that's why they're not with us today. They missed the boat, right? So they weren't able to get on the ark, so therefore we no longer have them. Of course, the unicorns, they didn't go either. You know? so certain animals didn't go. So what does that say? That Yahweh's a liar? Did Yahweh not say that he caused every animal, clean and unclean, to come and go to Noah to get on the ark? So if the unicorns didn't make it and the dinosaurs didn't make it, Yahweh's, Yahweh, that makes Yahweh a liar, right? So you see, this, all of these things do away with the belief in the scriptures and the belief that Yahweh is the actual creator. It's all very deceptive deception and very crafty in the way that they teach these things. But that's what they're doing. They're doing away with the scriptures. And so this is why it says that these religions try to take the real blame for global warming and many other troubles facing mankind away from themselves by making false statements concerning the real cause. Yet Yahweh's prophets, the 12 disciples and Yeshua, show the real cause for each and every plague an environmental disaster that's present and still to come. Okay, We haven't seen all of it yet. Things are still to come out. 52 years of warning. 1962 through a radio broadcast, a prophetic warning to this generation began. This message brought, light, brought to light the prophecy of Yeshua Messiah, showing the worst time of trouble ever would take place in this generation. From that moment on, Plagues brought about by man's activities would steadily worsen. Due to the message from that radio broadcast, several people joined the House of Yahweh in 1982 when they found out that we were the sponsors of that first radio broadcast. Other radio stations were later added, such as Shortwave and other sponsored stations, both of which broadcasted global. Um, that also reminds me, too, of the fact that some people in the past came to the house of Yahweh because they heard pastor preaching on the radio. Pretty neat, huh? Because he wasn't on that station. But, he, but they heard him preaching on the radio. But he wasn't on the station. 
That's the power of Yahweh. Since that time, the house of Yahweh has not ceased to send out the warning of what is shown in prophecy. And it's taking place at this time. Now, year after year, the place continued to grow worse. Yet the world will not repent, as your Bible says, of the activities that causes these curses that curse mankind and all living creation is suffering as a result of it. Revelations 9, 20 to 21, it says, The rest of the men who were not killed by these plagues, they still didn't repent from the works of their hands. Notice, it's from the works of their hands, okay? And the worship of demons and gods that causes these things. Neither did they repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of the fornication, nor of their thefts, and so forth. Okay, on page 76 here, here's another article. Drugs found in drinking water. Yum, yum, yum. A vast array of pharmaceuticals, including antibiotics, anticonvulsants, mood stabilizers, and sex hormones, have been found in the drinking water supplies of at least 41 million Americans. Wow. Only 41. Well, everybody else missed out, I guess, huh? Dang, man. The presence of so many prescription drugs and over-the-counter medicines like Acetophenamine, acetophen, yeah, that word, and ibuprofen is so much of, in our drinking water is heightening worries among scientists of long-term consequences to the human health because they know that it affects, you know, they sell them, but they tell you, don't take too many of them now. Don't take them too long. No, no, wait a minute, wait, no. You should take aspirin against heart disease. No, 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 you shouldn't take aspirin because it, it, it hurts your heart. No, 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 you should take it. And they go back and forth, back and forth. It's, it's, it's like with circumcision, right? They go in cycles. The doctors will say, yeah, you should circumcise your child. Nah, you shouldn't circumcise. Yeah, you should. No, you, you know, and they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Because what they do is they test the waters to see how people are going to respond. If people respond, then all right, they'll come out with an alternative. Same identical ingredients, but it's an alternative. And so, move them over here. And then, they'll test the waters and people start responding a certain way, then they'll move back on the other direction. You know, it's just like, it's so stinking wicked, it's pathetic. Um, but you see, that's why we have the prophetic word. And they have the pathetic word. Okay. Uh, the presence of so many prescription drugs. Man, it says, in the course of five-month inquiry... The AP discovered that drugs have been detected in the drinking water supplies of major metropolitan areas, from Southern California to Northern New Jersey, from Detroit to Louisville. Water providers, providers rarely disclose results of pharmaceutical screenings, unless pressured, of course. For example, the head of a group representing major Californian supplies said the public doesn't know how to interpret the information, and they might become unduly alarmed. I mean, you know. And then they try and say, okay, they, they break it down into millions, right? Millions. You can have so many parts of a million in this, and it's okay. Well, if you continually get it, and get it, and get it, and get it, but then it's like, okay, so that's the norm. So what we'll do is we'll increase that level so that now it looks safe, right? And so they continued to pull the wool over the eyes of the people. How did the drugs get in the water? Well, we will find out. People take pills. Their bodies absorb some of the medication, but the rest of it passes through and is flushed down the toilet. Ooh, fresh drinking water. The wastewater is treated before it is discharged into reservoirs, rivers, or lakes. That's real nice. That's comforting, isn't it? You know, and the thing is, now they go, they go boating and jet skiing and all this kind of stuff. So all of the, the, the oil and the stuff from the boats, the motors and so forth, all this stuff gets mixed into this water. And that's what they're drinking. You know, they pull this water out. 
So then some of the water is cleaned again by drinking at drinking water treatment plants and piped to consumers. But most treatments do not remove all drug residue. Here are some of the key test results obtained by the AP. Officials in Philadelphia say testing there discovered 56 pharmaceuticals or byproducts in treated drinking water, including medicines for pain, medicines for infection, high cholesterol, asthma, epilepsy, mental illness, and heart problems. 63 pharmaceuticals or byproducts were found in the city's watersheds. 63 pharmaceuticals or byproducts. Man, who needs drugs? Just drink the water. That's all you got to do, you know. Why do you need a pharmaceutical? Just go drink the sap, the tap of water. It's all in there. Anti-epileptic and anti-anxiety medications were detected in the portion of the drinking water in for eight and eighteen and a half million people in Southern California. Well, they don't have to worry about anxiety, then. and they probably know epileptic fits either, right? Researchers at the U.S. Geological Survey analyzed a Pacific Water. Uh, Valley Water Commission drinking water treatment plant, which serves 850,000 people in northern New Jersey and found a metabolized angina medicine. That's, that has to do with the heart and blood flow and so forth. And the mood stabilizing carbamazine. Uh, carbam, carbamazine. Anyway, in the drinking water. That has to do with nerve disorders and bipolar and so forth. A sex hormone was detected in San Francisco's drinking water. Well, that's no surprise, right? The drinking water for Washington, D.C. Now we're getting with the politicians. And surrounding areas tested positive for six pharmaceuticals. Yeah, that makes sense. Three medications, including an antibiotic, were found in drinking water supplied to Tucson. Now, this is just a very small percentage of things that's taking place. This is all over the place. What can the water suppliers remove from your toilet water before you drink it? Well, let's continue on. It says the federal government doesn't require any testing and hasn't set safety limits for drugs in water. Yeah, be why? Because remember what they said now. They said this, this group over in California said, well, the public might not know how to interpret the information. Well, I think anybody can interpret information when you start looking at all these heavy metals and drugs and, and things that are in the water that is deadly. That's all you got to know is that your tap water is deadly to drink because of the fact of all the things that are in there. You know, you don't need to, to know anything other than that. You can see that from the results. But this is the result of sin. This is what's taking place. Now, now think about it. When the kingdom is set up, None of that's going to be in the water. The water will be pure and fresh and clean. You will actually be able to drink water and actually taste what water tastes like. Because you don't know right now. You have no idea what water tastes like. We have some of the best tasting water on the face of the earth here at Abel. It's a delicious tasting water. But that's, just a, that's, that's nothing compared to what it's actually going to be in the kingdom. So... Out of the 62 major water providers contacted, the drinking water for only 28 were tested. Among the 34 that haven't was Houston, Chicago, Miami, Baltimore, Phoenix, Boston, and New York City's Department of Environmental Protection, which delivers water to 9 million people. Even users of bottled water in home filtration systems don't uh, avoid exposure. It says bottlers, some of which simply repackage tap water, do not typically treat or test for pharmaceuticals, according to the water, the, the industry's main trade group. The same goes for the makers of home filtration systems. Contamination is not confined to the United States. More than 100 different pharmaceuticals have been detected in lakes, rivers, reservoirs and streams throughout the world. Studies have detected pharmaceuticals in waters throughout Asia, Australia, Canada, 
in Europe, even in Swiss lakes and the North Sea. Now, you know, we know what the scripture says. We know how that the, the currents, the, the ocean currents, travel. And the water continually recycles throughout the whole earth. You know, and it can go down. Remember, it can go down, down to the bottom of the ocean and so forth and stay there for very, very long periods of time and so forth. But the impurities and stuff will be filtered out and it will, it will stir through and so forth. But because of man's sin now affecting the creatures that are in the water that actually take care of that purifying process, then they can no longer travel the way they used to. Because remember, as we read earlier as well, there's certain, certain species that don't have fins and, and can, can move themselves. They don't have any way to, 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 they don't have any motor skills the way they can actually move through the water. They depend upon the water currents to take them from one place to another. Which means that if it's traveling, it's expecting it to take it where there's going to be food for it. If there's no food for it and it takes it to that area, what's going to occur? It's going to die off. You know, but these things were all dependent upon these things. So what mankind's sin has done is actually affected that to where these animals, the sea creatures and stuff, are dying off because of man's sin. That's the way that they've affected these things. But man's too ignorant to realize these things. As we read in Isaiah 24, 5 through 6, how the earth is defiled, you know, it's being, uh, life is being annihilated and, and, and the earth is being depopulated of its inhabitants. And remember, Yeshua said in, in Luke 24, 25, you're fools if you don't believe all that the prophets have spoken. Let's continue with this article. It says, people think that they take a medication, their body absorbs it, and it just disappears. Nothing just disappears. You know, nothing just disappears. Life uses food. Food gives energy to a body, and then there is waste. That waste becomes food for another critter. And they consume it. They get energy. They have waste. Another critter comes along, and they take that waste from the waste of the waste, and they eat it and so forth. And, it, you know, it goes on and on like that, the microscopic levels. But people think that they take a medication, their body absorbs it, and it just disappears. But of course, that's not the case, said EPA scientist Christian Dalton, one of the first to draw attention to the issue of pharmaceuticals in the water in the United States. You believe me, the drug companies know this. Pharmaceutical companies know it, but they're not going to make it known. You know, they're not going to make it known what's going on. In fact, when you have companies, when, when they know that they have a pill that's 50 times greater of, of addiction and more powerful than other drugs. They know that, and they do everything they possibly can to get it out on the market, knowing the danger of it. You think they're concerned about it going into the water supply? You know? Their minds are so wicked and evil. Some drugs, including widely used cholesterol fighters, tranquilizers, and anti-epileptic medications, resist modern drinking water and waste treatment processes. They just can't get this stuff out of the water. It just passes on through the water, and somebody drinks it. And, and think about it now. This stuff is being recycled over and over and over again. You know, someone opens up the medicine cabinet, they look in, it's like, I don't need these no more. They dump them right down the toilet and flush them down the toilet. That goes into the system. Then they walk over to the top, open it up, and start drinking water from it, which already got medication from somebody else. It goes into their body. The waste goes out, and then it goes into the system again, and then it goes into somebody else's body, and somebody else's body, and it goes on and on and on and on, passing all over the place. Remember, It's an abomination for mankind to be with man. And it's an abomination for woman to be with woman. It's an abomination to commit these sexual sins. But people fail to realize that when the microbial world are raped and the microbial world is mutated, and these other microbes, these STDs, force themselves against these other microbes, 
they're committing these same abominations because there's male and there's female and so forth with them too. You know, and this cycle just increases and goes on and on and on and affects everything. It says, remember one more scripture as you continue just to know that Yahweh told you before it came upon you. Revelations 9, 20 and 21 about how the people did not repent of their plagues and repent of the works of their hands. And neither would they repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. In verse 21, of course, the word sorceries is number 5331 in Strong's Greek Dictionary, and it means medication, pharmacy, druggist, pharmacist. So they're not going to repent from doing these things. Of course, you can read more about that in the Mark of the Beast as well. Superbugs are breeding, spreading drug-resistant genes at water treatment plants. What they found in the treated water. Their tests found that both water treatment facilities were releasing thousands of copies per milliliter of the resistant NDM1 superbug gene. Treated sludge contained even greater amounts, 10 million copies per gram of dry weight. One treatment plant was actually expelling more of this infectious DNA into the environment than it was actually taken in. Now that's the result of man. Isaiah 24, verse 5, it says the earth is defiled because they have transgressed the ordinance. And so Francis, the laws, the ordinance is broken in the everlasting covenant. Also, you remember Legionnaire's disease. You don't hear too much about that anymore. That's the type of pneumonia that's spread through bacteria and, and, and air conditioned systems and things like that. Cocaine, spices, home, hormones found in drinking water. The water flowing from your tap might be spiked with some unusual ingredients, according to the scientists who are investigating what lurks in our fresh water supplies. Around the world, researchers of see that's the thing. Remember, Genesis three one, Satan is the most subtle beast, right? She's the most subtle creature. You can't see these things in the water. So when people go and get a drink, a drink of water out of their tap, they can't see it. They cannot see what's in that water when they're drinking it. Around the world. Researchers are founding trace amounts of substances from heroin to rocket fuel and birth control that might be having unintended consequences for humans and wildlife alike. It might be, notice. It might be having unintended consequences for humans and wildlife alike. Well, I don't think heroin or drinking rocket fuel would hurt you, right? I mean, come on. How's that going to affect you in any way, you know? It might be harmful. You know, it's, their minds are just gone. University of Washington Associate Professor Richard Keel heads the Sound Citizen Program, which investigates how, investigates how what we do on land affects our waters. It certainly does, because he realizes that. Disease epidemics. Why there's no real cures? Well, anyone should be able to see that diseases are getting worse. They're stronger and they're drug resistant. And of course, the death rates from every lethal disease are climbing. This means the cause of these diseases remains untouched. It also means the reason for these diseases is continually being fed. Below are just a few of, the, of these legal, lethal diseases that are mutating and crossing with other fatal viruses and or bacteria. It says newly identified strains of chlamydia uh, trachomitis uh, could produce new diseases. A new study led by scientists at Children's Hospital, Oakland Research Institute, is the first to include that chlamydia trachomitis is involving, evolving, notice. It's evolving. Now they're finally using the word that makes sense, doesn't it? There's your evolution from sin. It's evolving at a rate faster than scientists first thought or imagined. Chlamydia is a bacterium that is the leading cause of sexually transmitted diseases and the second leading cause of blindness worldwide. Scientists believe the bacterium is evolving through a process called 
recombination, where genes from one or more strains combine to create new strains, theoretically new diseases. Now, how is that possible? Well, of course, they're living creatures. They have mates. This is the defilement that's taking place with these creatures. But to them, it's just a gene. It's just this object. It's this, it's this little small microscopic thing that they look at in the Petri dish. And that's all that they can understand. They plainly tell you, recombination. What we found is an organism that not only evolves rapidly, but in ways that we thought were rare. We also discovered this organism can customize its attack. It can customize its attack. Yes, it can figure out the different ways that it wants to entice something and rape it. And remember, there's a lot of proof that this is what causes STDs, that they actually rape the, one another. Deadly virus is mutating faster than before. Deadly virus is mutating to infect humans at a rate never seen before. All right, we've got to stop here on page 77 here. Deadly disease is mutating faster than ever before, and the kind would take off there. May Yahweh bless you, man. If you go